If you've ever tried to use an electric or gas-powered airsoft gun during the winter, then there's a good chance that you've experienced what the cold can do to wreak havoc within them. <laughs> No one wants this to happen to them, so in today's lesson we're going to explore how to protect our power sources from the cold and what's needed to make sure that our guns are always ready for the moment where we need them most. To figure out what's happening with batteries and gas in the cold, it's extremely important that we understand a few basic things about how they work and what it is about the cold that causes problems in the first place. Things are about to get a little nerdy, but bear with me, I'll keep things as simple as possible. With lithium ion batteries in particular, freezing temperatures have the effect of slowing down the chemical reaction that is taking place within. This causes them to need to work harder to provide power and ultimately leads them to draining faster than usual. In addition, the actual lithium ions within the cell can begin to coat the anode portion, a phenomenon referred to as lithium plating. This can also happen when a battery is overcharged, and the result can be very detrimental to the overall lifespan of the battery as it increases the resistance. If the problem gets bad enough, the separator between the anode and the cathode can be damaged, leading to a short that will completely kill the battery altogether. When it comes to gas-operated weapons, a lot of people will just advise to use CO2 or HPA instead of green gas. The truth is that every gas is subject to the laws of physics, but with HPA systems having so much volume available in the tank and being able to manually vary the output pressure on the fly, they can offer the greatest consistency. Yeah, the main problem is that when gases condense from being put under pressure, they become a liquid. When that liquid is then introduced to the cold, it starts to become a solid which lowers the available pressure to push the BB down the barrel. CO2 is usually under a much higher pressure than green gases and thus is usually less affected by the cold, but as you probably know, it's not completely immune either. Even in warm environments, firing a gas weapon too quickly can cause cooldown of the gun and magazine, reducing its effectiveness. If any gas system reaches too low of a temperature, you simply won't have the pressure needed to cycle the weapon. So for our green gas users out there, just make sure to switch to a higher pressure version like red or black gas to compensate for the loss of pressure. But remember, the higher the PSI that you put into the gun, the more likely you are to damage the seals or other parts of the weapon. As well, it's also possible to have too much pressure in a magazine, causing the hammer to light strike and not actually activate the valve to release the gas. So now that we have a better understanding of what's going on, what are some of the things that we should and shouldn't do in freezing environments? And how can we make sure that our gun will last all day long? Well, one of the worst things that we can do with any gas gun is attempting to fire it too quickly without allowing the components to warm back up. As the cold spreads from the magazine to the rest of the gun, the critical functions of the weapon are hampered as parts begin to shrink and the rubber seals become more brittle. This can lead to leakage or, in the worst cases, can cause plastic or even metal parts to break from the stresses placed on the now weakened materials. This means we need to keep our spare magazines warm whenever possible and to be considerate with how fast we cycle the weapon. Swapping to a fresh mag will help things operate more smoothly, but don't forget that the rest of the gun will still need time to warm back up between extensive burst fires. Well, what about batteries? Surely the quickest way to keep them warm is to just keep firing, which will promote the flow of electricity through the system, right? Well, technically, yes, that can warm it up, but not for long and not in the way that you want. Because of the increased current that is needed in cold temperatures, you'll not only be draining your battery faster, but you'll be decreasing its overall lifespan. This is the same reason that we don't want to ever charge our batteries while they're in the cold, anything under zero degrees Celsius, as it leads to the problem of lithium plating that we mentioned before. Your safest bet is to have the battery somewhere in the weapon that is close to your body, or even better, to have spares in a warm area that you can swap out as needed. I would personally advise against ever storing them in your pockets though, or in a place that can be shot. Because of the nature of lithium batteries, this can very easily cause a fire. But thankfully, we've got some ideas that work much better, and we'll get to those shortly. But first, let's quickly talk about something that can silently destroy your gun if you're not aware of it. Condensation. If you wear glasses, then you likely know what happens when you go from being outside in the cold to then going inside a nice warm building. A relentless fog occurs, and as hard as you might try, it keeps reappearing until the glasses warm back up. This is because of the cold on the glasses condensing the humidity in the air and on the lenses into water droplets. So how does that affect us airsofters? Well, when we bring our guns in from the cold, the same things happen. We might see it on the surface, but it will also be happening to some degree on the internal parts as well. The best way to prevent this is to make the change of temperature more gradual. Some of us unknowingly do this, as after the match, we get into our cold cars that were parked outside, and they slowly warm up as we drive. 
If you can't avoid it, just be sure to be considerate about it and take the extra time to make sure that things are dry on the high traffic areas within the weapon. This will help minimize rusting as well as unintentionally washing out the important lubrications. So about keeping those batteries warm, how do we do it if we can't just throw them in our pockets or we don't have a warm building to keep them in? Well, if you're properly stuck out in the cold, then a great way to keep the heat within them is to use a properly designed battery blanket, which sadly needs more batteries to power it, or we can simply use or even make our own battery box. Using something like an old ammo canister, you can place your spare batteries into a shirt or other material for insulation. Then with the addition of an instant heating pack, we can create a warm environment for our batteries to stay ready for use. Some important notes though, I would advise against fully sealing the box as the heat generated will raise the pressure within even if it is only very slightly. As well, not all hot packs are created equal, so use a layer or two of your insulating material to separate the battery and the hot pack to help avoid overheating the cells. Most batteries shouldn't be used in environments over 60 degrees Celsius, and thankfully the vast majority of heat packs operate under that temperature. This means that if you have the room in your battery compartment, you might be able to put one in there too to keep your active battery warmed up while you're on the field. These are just some of the ideas I've come up with from solutions I've seen in the past, but if you have any input or creative ideas, then please drop them in the comments, I'd really love to hear them. However you prepare your power sources, just be sure to use your best judgment and remember that all of these systems are susceptible to extreme temperatures temperatures, hot and cold. So now that we've readied ourselves and our guns, how should we go about making ourselves and our gear blend into this unique environment of either snowy terrain or just a general lack of greenery? Well, we'll be discussing that in our next lesson. So for now, thank you so much for watching. Class is dismissed. <laughs> Keeping that in.